you know, uh, and then kept public private partnership. Wait a minute, wait. Uh, the equity is the steward. That's the equity. That's the operation. Uh, what's, what's their equity? Where's their equity? If it's a partnership. It's not a partnership at all. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, I've seen a refund from this guy. I asked him how much you got an hour. I, I, would, I would get all the legal bills and see exactly, uh, you know, just what you're paying for. Because $144,000 to go on a block. Now, Mr. Pabstrat, I told you this before, Mr. Pabstrat, the mayors of John City, they took a tour of the sewer plant. They talked to Jacob's employees. Request for proposal clearly states no contact between the bidders and public officials. None. Zero. Not a cup of coffee, not a week, not a phone call, nothing. You've got Jacob's Engineering, who's got a request in for, for, for the contract, and you're talking. You can't do that. And this invalidates the proposal, and you know it. They cannot, they cannot be allowed to win this bid. And I suggest you go back right to the beginning, because apparently people didn't know the rules. On this job out here, how can I pick uh, the, the, the grand is being dropped. It's, it's, you've got a level out there. They're putting black top. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to the tape and find it out. If I get short change, you'll have to uh, give me more. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to speak in public comment? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Kenny Greenlee, and I'm the CSCA Central Region 5 President. <clears throat> I'm here today to talk about the proposed privatization of the Big of Dick Johnson City's Joint Sewage Treatment Plan. Excuse me one second, sir. Um, do you live in the city? No, I do not. Are you okay? What are the suspended rules? Well, there are suspended rules, so you all live in the city. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Over the past month, you've heard from the plant staff, as well as many members of the community, and a number of issues have been raised over this period of time. First, you have the impact of a privatization on the employees of the sewage treatment plant. Staff of the plant have been lauded for their professionalism and their expertise by members of this council, as well as the city staff. And yet no one has been able to tell them what the potential impact would be on their jobs. The claim is contrary to the justifications of the issuance of the RFP itself, which claims that staff does not have expertise to run this new facility. Their jobs are civil service tested, and they are training constantly to make sure that they have the knowledge to do their jobs effectively and efficiently. In fact, you are paying them be trained right now. You have heard from both management and plant staff who have testified that they have the necessary knowledge to run this facility and that it really is not that different from the way that they currently do their jobs. You have no idea what kind of stress this has caused for our members who now have to rethink their whole lives. We have members saying that they will not, that they will leave the community that they live in and possibly uh, the state if they are privatized. Our members work their tails off and they deserve much better from all of you. They are here because they care and that is exactly what you would be losing with a multifunctional corporation taking over their work. You lose members of your community who care so much about the impact of their work on the community. There are accountability to you all. Can you guarantee that the same accountability with a different company. Our members have lived and worked in this community for decades. They bring experience and genuine interest in the outcome of their essential work. They fish and swim in the rivers as much as anybody in this community, and they actually care. After spending almost $300 million of the public's money, public privatization even be on the table. You are essentially asking the public to pay for a project and then give up accountability 
Just think about that for a second. One of the biggest and most expensive projects in the history of the city and the county. And then we let a private company run it. I understand no one here has made a decision and that you all say you have to wait to see what the bids come out of have. But just think about the whole issue uh, in the context of the plant staff. They have done an incredible job. They made it through severe flooding and deteriorating infrastructure, all while operating the plant in an effectively, uh, as effectively as possible. They have done and will continue to do a fantastic job for the community. The city claims that the goal of the public-private partnership is to allocate risk uh, so there's no accountability in our office. To that I ask who is more accountable, public sector employees who are vigorously tested and multiple layers of oversight on the public bodies or private corporation looking to serve their own self-interest. Lastly, I want to focus on the idea of shifting accountability. As Bruce Tony said on Monday, he said in, in at least three separate times. And my question is to that, where are we shifting accountability? The only things that the mayors do not want to be accountable for are the pending double sewage rates and their own values in regards to this construction and the planning of the plan. Thank you for listening. Specifically tasked and go away when the job is done. 
New standard ID is used in the new plant. It's more modern, it's similar to the old plant. New indications it still is in the old plant. Same two thickeners, same three digesters, same CML cells, one through eight, and the type of place for decades. We did get new CML cells in 1914, and we will. In 2006, we can handle 45 million gallons a day from Benton to 15 million gallons a day from Johnson City. The new plant only adds 5 million gallons a day from Benton. We have run a similar plant in the past that was operating. I would also caution the Council of Trustees to look at the total costs, what the city and village will not be taking on, and it's been under the board's budget in the past. Someone still pays the debt service, someone still pays the local systems costs. It may be a pass through. The rate payer is still ultimately funding the overall treatment, overhead, and dental costs. And since I have a bunch of time, I would point out that currently, in 2018, management accounted for 4% of the total operating budget for one minute. I want to one minute. Unless you have a question you would like to ask me, I would encourage you to read my focus. I think Mr. Toby is selling it in the upper room clothes. He presents a very good picture. He makes it sound very good, but there's no substance behind his words. Just as there was no report to back him up. I'd love to respond to his report, but I was not offered. The client still has not heard an official notice or a comment or memo of what's going on. I think that's his spirit. Mayor's made your communications with the science. We should be able to, he was able to respond within hours when the community had a data breach. Why has it taken half a year to let us know what's going on? Thank you. Trustees 
can make an informed decision and the people can be confident that that decision is made based on facts. Instead, it looks like we paid $140,000 for a sales pitch masquerading as a report. And the report was oral, so there was no way to say what facts went into it. We just heard a bunch of conclusions, and many of them are unsupportable on their face. For example, the notion that if you can't operate a plant that's falling apart, you can't be trained to operate a plant that supposedly is state-of-the-art, refurbished, and if, if that new plant is more of a problem to run the existing plant, what are we paying $400,000 for? Good question. From the beginning, there was a problem because the process went on, we didn't find out about until the beginning of May, whereby decisions were made behind closed doors. The biggest decision was just to avoid one of the options entirely and just focus on ushering through a privatization scheme. And uh, this is not the way government should work in democracy or a republic. It seems more like something you'd expect in a banana. You know? So my hope is that we will get rid of everything that's happened up to now back to square one and do it right. Thank you. Raining, and 
the night before, we came in on second shift, I worked the day shift, and along with the administrative people, Kathy was down there. We, we were going down to the basements before the wind of water was coming up. We knew it was going to flood. And we were taking out electronic pieces of equipment to try and salvage what we could, and we did that. We climbed up the stairs with heavy equipment, and we saved a lot of money. You know, things that maybe FEMA didn't have to talk about. Uh, there's also a huge snail problem we had with the uh, operators had to bust their homes. And that's a whole other story I don't want to get into because of time. We wanted them to talk about it. Uh, we put in very complicated plumbing systems um, for seal water for all the main pumps. We do that. That would cost a fortune to have somebody come in to do that, but we do that. Our head mechanic is a master plumber, and he's also a great guy. And I respect him probably more than I respect him. Okay. And having said that, there's another guy, Elliot. He is he's a genius. And he knows more about that plant than anyone on the face of this earth. To lose either one of these guys or any of the other really good people that we have in the straight up. Okay. To lose any one of these people would be a travesty. It would be terrible for the ratepayers and power ratepayers. Uh, Mr. told me, called us good soldiers. I never saw him. Nobody saw him except that Charlie said two people saw him. So, again, he's a salesman. He privatizes. And we've got this. And thank you for your time.
Hi, my name is Brian Lippick. I'm an uh, employee at the uh, Treatment for Toxicity Wastewater Solution Treatment Plant. What Toby uh, said at the plant needs to be, or needs is absolutely correct. Skilled cross train staff and uh, maintenance program at CMS and a team to remedy issues in a correct timely manner and an issue of disaster arises. The plant currently has and has had for some time all those things. After each flood, storm, and infrastructure failures have all collapsed, it was our plant staff union management of life working together to get things drained down, clean, and back online as quickly as possible. We are experts. We know this plant inside and out better than anyone could. We have been trained on the new equipment the entire process and still have several more things coming online. This is the after this is after the fact that people have had passed stringent wastewater courses at SUNY Morrisville, have had to pass New York State license exams, each grade license, and then a civil service test after the license exam for each grade license. But then, there are contact hours that we must maintain and by attending more trainings to keep our licenses current and valid. We got this. It's not new technology. We've run this before. There's no difference between the two systems other than the media. Tank size, according to Kruger's own rep, it will be easier to run. Another thing that we've been constantly hearing is that management needs to be looked at. This is the original reason for the study. There, that there is no document, documented evidence of the management issues has still been identified or specified to us. Which branch of management? Political, sewer board, day-to-day plant, plant management, or the construction management? If it is the management that is the concern, we might go to contract, ops, and maintenance and everyone, including Mr. Toby, keeps stating how qualified and passionate about our jobs we are. Jacobs had had members of the sister com company, CH2M, on site the entire time, attending our trainings and harassing our employees. They have been taking pictures under false pretenses as well. Just today, the gentleman was walking through the plant, around the plant, with CH2M best on. If both of the municipalities will still own it, and then they are saying land management is stellar. They must be talking about the sewer board because construction doesn't apply. The board management study, not us, maintenance, plant staff management. The board is appointed, so if they, are, if they aren't happy with them, they need to rectify that, not including operators and rate payers already know that there is going to be a rate increase that might change. Because my understanding of the legislation that allocated the hundred and forty or hundred and forty-five thousand dollars last fall was that it was going to be a study to study the best form of management for the plan. Apparently, it was an allocation of hundred and forty or hundred and forty-five thousand dollars to prepare a big package. It wasn't a study. And I specifically wanted to say to Councilman Papstra and Councilman Monto, I had the pleasure of working with you two gentlemen. And I know that you've always taken your duties as council people very seriously. And the notion that either one of you would sit there and accept the answer that there is no report and there is nothing in writing after spending a hundred Forty or one hundred and forty-five thousand dollars, and my blown. Because in all the years that I sat next to you, neither one of you would have tolerated that for a minute. 
I thought that, um, I think that the whole thing has been very misleading, honestly. I think this board has probably been misled just as much as everyone else. I still go back to the question I asked the last few times I was here regarding the IMA and how this has all happened without the IMA and without the sewer board being involved, because the IMA is pretty clear that, that it can't work that way. Um, I also will say, as I've said before, there is no doubt about it that the management structure, and I'm not talking about the plant management, I'm talking about the boards and the sewer board and the very cumbersome IMA. There's no doubt about it that that needs to be looked at. But this doesn't really seem to be eliminating any of that. It seems to be just adding one more layer. The folks behind me, the folks who work at that plant, have done a stellar job of digging us out of our own you-know-what, literally and figuratively, on more than one occasion. And I thought that Mr. Toby's kind of cavalier attitude about it being an RFP, that they could keep their jobs, they could apply for their jobs, I thought it was very cavalier. Um, I was offended by it. And yes, I also couldn't find it in the RFP I looked. So I think that it was insulting. I think that the whole thing was insulting, and I'm shocked that this board would put up with it. So, I hope that you are all paying attention. Can someone tell me who the council rep is on the committee? Excellent, so that still hasn't been decided. I just can't believe that you're all just sitting here letting it happen. You have an obligation to the ratepayers, to the business owners, to the homeowners, to all of the people who work at that plant. You all represent them. You all work for them. Not just the three dozen or so that work over there, but everybody who pays a water and sewer bill. Please, please, dig in and demand a little more accountability because that is what is not here in this whole sick scenario. So that's all I want to say on the I have one request of, I think, probably the city clerk. This is the third time I've been down to a meeting in the last few months, and I, the agendas are always here, but the legislation is not here. So is there any way that we can also have copies of the legislation for the public so they can see and the titles don't always, the devil's in the details, as we all know, as we've all discovered here recently. So I just want to throw that out as a suggestion. Thank you. Another gentleman or 
two other gentlemen. Every time I ran, there was two guys. They played one strand, go to the next one, go to the next one, go to the next one. Then you have to go back into the first one. If you weren't on top of that, the strand would get sucked into the pipe, and then we had to go out by our strand. It was getting very expensive. Uh, the same, the new technology is exactly the same as the old. It actually says that the 158 BRP, it describes the differences. The major differences are the, well, obviously the better. Uh, the sizes of the tanks, the type of media that we're using, and the size of the media. And then the band loss load goes up instead of down. I'm sorry, it goes down instead of up. Outside of that, same technology, same bacteria, same thing we've already done. Um, Bruce Toby mentioned that this is the only plant in 50 states like this. I recently took a tour of Syracuse. They have a biosphere, they have an agriculture system, they have aerated grid, they have everything that we're getting. So I don't understand how our way we're the only ones that have this. Uh, training, we are constantly going through training. Uh, we, the past probably, I'm going to say three months, we've had 40, 50 hours of training. Uh, the instructors make it very well known that he's impressed with us and that uh, we're asking more advanced questions than he's had to ask before. He actually has to go down, go home, do some research, and then come back and give us the answer the next day. And the big thing that there was a lot of questions on uh, Monday was the CMMS software. Um, we've used the software. We started using this new software. We had software prior to this. It was the greatest. 2014, we adopted a new system. We've been using it ever since. As new buildings and new assets are coming online, we're adding them to the, to the CMMS software, and we'll go through the OM manual to figure out the maintenance schedule. If the maintenance schedule say it recommends six months inspections, we do three months, just until we find out how the equipment's going to work at our at our facility. After that, we'll adjust to up to the manufacturer's recommendations. I appreciate you guys listening to us tonight. Um, that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you.
that there's a lot of positive things that can come from this. And we did participate in our fest two years in a row, 2010 and 2009. And it got amazing feedback. People asked questions. They weren't, why do you smell? They actually were interested to know in the process what happens when it actually goes down the drain. And a lot of them think that their drinking water comes from us, and it does not. And they think that the only thing we do is sewage, and it is not. Um, it is a very actual small percentage of what we do there. Um, Cleveland has an excellent PR program. They've hired a firm to do it, of course, but their public relations is astronomical. They have posters and all their little teams, stadiums, and zoos with their logo on it, with kitschy sayings about what not to flush down the toilet. They participate in parades, they have open houses. Um, they work really well with the community, and they obviously do have to have great heights and upgrades and changes, and it is well received. And just from the two years that we did the Earth Fest and explaining the process, um, I got a lot of good feedback. There wasn't any negative from the community. I think they appreciated that. So this is just another option to remove the black mark as soon as everyone else's rates are going to go up anyway. Do something to the roots. Thank you.
and that was across from Bima's Pizza there, up there twice. So I, but I also popped them in and happened to talk to the county about it. So I don't know if the county can do anything more for it and investigate it further or, or what, but that's why I got in contact with it. And then it took about a year for them to actually catch them and close stop them. So the store is still open. They stopped, took away their uh, tobacco license and other things that I can Sir, I know this guy is pretty good. They took the license cigarettes, but they still sell the cigarettes the whole time. That's what I got. They sell cigarettes and then they only say sell it to people they know like they're not like stranger. But never changed in the south side of Coconut. Still the same thing. I think with Lucy's situation, it's a health department matter. It's a health department issue. So the health department is concerned for the Lucy's because you're not supposed to sell them and distribute them. But for the instant cigarettes, it's from the taxes, the tax force from, from Syracuse. But us, us, I live in a community, and this is take part of us. Maybe is anything we could do us without the taxes, without them. We can. Which which store do you uh, are you at most of the time? Uh, I'm on the north side, uh, Five Eleven Street. Five Eleven Street. Yes, sir. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Uh, I, was, I was just going to ask you. Could you please repeat your phone number again? Six zero seven. Four two two. Five four three nine. I mean, like we can get the business owner and send them a letter. We can talk to them that not know for the building something, you know. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Good luck to you guys. Thank you. Okay, I'd Thank like you. to come. Thank you. 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 The water. I'm I pay the bills. I'm a regular citizen here. Listening to this gentleman's interaction with all of you brought something to mind, which is we spend a lot of money on economic development, right? Trying trying to bring jobs here, trying to get people to open small businesses, trying to have an even playing field, and trying to have a local community interaction. Just like you were doing with him, take the phone number, work together. And that's why it, it just seems odd to me that there would be any rush to have an out-of-town layer of management introduced between this board, Johnson City, the sewage board, and the workers who are my, my neighbors. Our friends and neighbors who are making their money here, spending their money here. Why in the world can't plant be managed here? So I'm very glad that you're taking this whole issue seriously. I like our tradition of doing things as a community. We are no dumber than anybody else and smarter than most. We, we can manage our own sewage. Thank you. What else was in this case in the public comment? All right, we'll close that report to the meeting.
Councilwoman Grunts? Aye. Councilman Taylor? Aye. Councilman Tapstrap? Aye. Councilman Ponce? Aye. Councilman Preston's name? Aye. That's seven ayes, zero nays. Third up for resolution 19065, Mr. Finance, Councilman Tapstrap. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to ask for your hands approval of the new Ordinance 1019 65. Second. This is an ordinance to amend the 2019 general fund budget to adjust various personal service funds. Question or comments? Call the question. Question or call? Councilman Scritch? Aye. Councilman Livingston? Aye. Councilman Crunch? Aye. Councilman Taylor? Aye. Councilman Tapscar? Aye. Councilman Matza? Aye. President Aye. Seven ayes, zero Introductory resolution 19-66, considered by employees, I'm sorry, Councilman Patrick. Thank you again, Mr. President. I'd uh, like to ask you for uh, introductory ordinance 019-66. Yes, sir. Approval. This is an ordinance amending chapter 124 to 26 personnel policies for the code of the city of Bay to modify continued health insurance coverage for eligible retired children. Questions or comments? Councilman Taylor first. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to quickly emphasize the importance of this piece of legislation just because it's critical that we put into writing into our city code this guarantee that our employees who are promised health insurance when they retire actually receive it. For those that don't know, haven't been up to date up to date on a specific issue, there is actually no in writing guarantee uh, of, of this critical component of the City of Vegas benefits package. This fixes that uh, and, and, and will ensure that you know there's no surprises uh, that aren't communicated effectively between our employees and City of Vegas. Thank you. Councilman Scritch. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, <clears throat> Just for uh, our residents here, as well as uh, uh, watching, or will watch rather, or are. Uh, just a little bit of a backstory on this. Uh, so, this actually was codified in the city charter, but in a slightly different way as it relates to two factors uh, the proportion of payment uh, for eligible retirees, as well as a New York State health insurance plan that existed at the time. Both of those two things were correlated in the city charter. Over time, that New York State Health Insurance Program, uh, quite frankly, dissipated and was no longer in existence. And the proportion that was still in the city charter was now not relegated to anything specific. So what this piece of legislation does is it ensures and codifies in our city charter that our eligible retirees do have uh, in black and white, so to speak, uh, the actual proportional relationship of retirement payments and the city. Uh, so again, um, I unanimously and incredibly support this. I want to thank all of our city employees that went through uh, pretty rigorous rounds of conversations with this, as well as uh, departments in City Hall, and I hope everyone will support this. Thank you, Mr. President. Other questions or comments? Call the question, Mr. President. Can call? Councilman Sprinty? Aye. Councilman Lemonson? Aye. Councilman Cross? Aye. Councilman Taylor? Aye. Councilman Patrick? Aye. Councilman Mazza? Aye. President Scan? Aye. Aye. Seven nine zero. In regard to your ordinance, one nine eight six seven, considered in finance, Councilman Patrick. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to ask for unanimous approval of uh, introductory ordinance 019-67. Second. This is an ordinance authorized the mayor to submit the fiscal year 45 annual action plan and accept any and all funds allocated for the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for the CDPG, ESG, and Home Retirement Programs. Questions or comments? Call the question. Question to call. Councilman Scrinji? Aye. Councilman Livingston? Aye. Councilman McGrath? Aye. Councilman Taylor? Aye. Councilman Capstrand? Aye. Councilman Monson? Aye. 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 A
press the scan. Right. At seven eyes here, please. Introductory resolution 19 49, considered an NPA. Council is agreed to Thank you, Mr. President. I stand and ask unanimous approval for introductory resolution 19 49. Second, a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation for inspection of the water facility property. Questions or comments? All the questions, Mr. President. Councilman Strangey? Aye. Councilman Livingston? Aye. Councilman McCrones? Aye. Councilman Taylor? Aye. Councilman Patrick? Aye. Councilman Monson? Aye. President Strangey? Aye. Aye. Seven ayes, zero nays. Introduction resolution 19-5-0-19-5-0-19-5-0-19-5-0-19-5-0-19-5-0-19-5-0-19-5-0-19-5-0-19-5-0-19-5-0-19-5-0-19-5-0-19-5-0-19-5-0-19-5-0-19-5-
prayer today is June 19th, uh, which is Juneteenth, the celebration of the emancipation of slaves in the United States of America. Uh, it is a holiday that, in my opinion, is not celebrated and, and really well known enough at all in our community here in Greater Binghamton and also uh, throughout the country. You know, we have July 4th coming in a couple of weeks, something that, you know, most of us, including myself, are always very excited for. It's our Independence Day. But on a day like today, it's important to remember that Independence Day really wasn't like Independence Day for a lot of Americans. A lot of Americans didn't gain any sort of independence on July 4th. Uh, that happened on June 19th. So, um, Obviously, there are still some ways to go in terms of equal rights campaigns. There's an exciting event happening this Saturday at Columbus Park where you can show your support of the Juneteenth celebration from 12 to 5 p.m. Also, this week is Black and Minority Owned Restaurant Week in the city of Binghamton. Uh, they can check it out online on Facebook. Uh, take the opportunity to, to support the locally owned Black and Minority Owned business. Um, it's nice to go out of your way. And uh, I think today is the next time to talk about that. Uh, always stuff going on. I think that's it for me today. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Pax here. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'll keep it brief tonight. I just want to address the uh, people that are here this evening. And uh, I was I took a tour of the pack. Some of you uh, were there and uh, showed us around. Uh, it really is a amazing uh, facility, and driving by, you would never know what goes on inside the equipment. It really is amazing. And I just want to put everyone's mind at ease. I appreciate everyone coming down and speaking to us. No one here has made up their mind on what's going on. The presentation Monday uh, was enlightening in, 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 in many different ways. We're waiting for, I guess, Tuesday here, and I want to open up the, the uh, bids for the uh, proposals, and then we're going to go over them, fine tune the comb. There's other, and, and see if, there, if that's not acceptable, what other methods can improve uh, at that plant so that everyone is satisfied. That we do the best for the employees, that we do the best for the rate payer, and then we do the best for the facility. That was going to be our goal. And I think everyone here is up to catch them. So we're going to definitely do due diligence. Nothing's going to be done uh, in the midnight hour, uh, at least not for mine. So uh, be rest assured we're going to do the best we can for the for everyone's sake. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Monson. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming. And uh, I just want to address one thing that Terry Gregg has said. Just because I don't say nothing doesn't mean I'm not listening. I'm listening to both sides. I want to hear what they both, both of you have to say. Even though this poll has one person on one side and all of you. I have no doubt you know how to manage this place. I have no doubt you work your tails off to keep us going. You've kept us going through the major disasters we've had. When the walls blew down, with the 06 flood, the 2011 flood, I, I have no questions in my mind you can't do this. I have not made up my mind. I'm not even close to making up my mind. I don't even know what to do yet. I want to see what's happening. I want to see what's going on. I want to hear from the other side. I want to hear. I'm hearing from you every day. I get phone calls. There's no two hands or so buts in my mind. That your people work hard, and I, I appreciate it. Thank you for your services over there. It's, it's not an easy job, I know. So, and that's really all I have to say tonight. And thank you again. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just a reminder to uh, uh, to everyone that uh, in the first district, uh, our monthly, our June monthly first word neighborhood watch meeting, uh, tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. Uh, at the first ward, uh, or the first ward neighborhood watch at St. Michael's, 296 Cliff Street at 6 p.m. Uh, hope everyone will come down. Um, I also want to 
congratulate the uh, uh, Order of the Sons of Italy, uh, the Binghamton Lodge 47. Uh, they actually gave out uh, almost $2,000 to scholarships to Binghamton graduating seniors. So I want to thank the, uh, the Lodge and Four Miles and congratulate all of them. Uh, lastly, uh, I want to thank all of our city employees who have come here tonight. Uh, you hear this uh, in honor again. Uh, I hope I've articulated this well uh, in the beginning. Uh, thank you for everything that you do. And um, I'm not going to sit here and repeat everything that was said because uh, it's quite cranking out there. Uh, but um, I myself, both in the formerly in the private sector and now in the public sector, I'm a very data driven person. Uh, I always want to hear both sides. Um, and we got to hear one side, and I think there's going to be a process in place that I can meet. Um, with all of you to hear uh, the other side as well. Um, and I welcome that and I'm looking forward to that phone call in that meeting. So, uh, so you all know that I am open to him. I am publicly I'm putting that out there. So I would be uh, honored to do that if uh, schedule is permitting a lot of So uh, with that being said, uh, thank you again all very much. Thank you to our business owners uh, who are here tonight, our firefighters, our police officers that came down tonight. And uh, that's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councilman. And it comes to Thank you, Mr. President. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to see so many people coming to these chambers. Uh, when I first got sworn in, I remember looking out over over the gallery and seeing all these people here and saying, man, I just want to make sure that what we do, we keep people coming back more engaged people are in our process, we lay all our feet to the fire, they make everything just a little bit better when they, when they feel like they have a voice and they show up. Um, I also want to you know, thank uh, Council Castrat, the Mayor, and Mayor Dini as well for going on the tour. And I agree, you know, the, the plant is unassuming from the outside. Um, you go into our expression, bowels of the plant. It's, uh, it's pretty impressive. Um, you wouldn't know what to look at from the outside. And uh, some of the work that's been done here is impressive. And some of the construction work that's been going on here is downright disappointing. Um, I also want to actually correct um, my colleague in the second from the fourth district. Um, he would say that, uh, that we can actually uh, listen back to the audio from that from that meeting back in uh, October of last year here. The conversation happened. I actually requested a copy of the audio from the, from the clerk and it uh, couldn't be found. So that was really unfortunate desire. I wasn't in the office at the time and I was really interested to, uh, to hear that conversation that happened back then. Um, you know, and I just want to just say one more thing, which is that when I got involved, uh, you know, in municipal politics, municipal government. Uh, I know how this house works, you know. At the end of the day, if I'm a gay, everyone else is an A, then, you know, I suck it up and I, and I move on. Um, and I'm okay with that, I'm at peace with that. Um, but the thing that really bothers me about this process is that it just seems just manifestly built as we have a structure that is costing us money to not paying these fines that, you know, you know because the, the project is so overdue, so past due. And it seems like the sensible thing, the fiscally responsible thing to do right now, is to figure out why the construction is so off track and to focus our efforts on getting that construction project back on track. And then once the construction is Give our staff, give the well, staff the board technically, you know, give our staff and manager to over and plan the opportunity to calibrate these, these systems so we can see how they operate. Uh, and then figure out, you know, at that point, how to fix the management structure. And you know what? At that point, privatization is on the table. And I'm in the minority, and I will still be able to be way more okay with that outcome having gone through a more fiscally responsible path of finishing the construction uh, and holding this construction accountable and then you know
how they're giving us staff. Uh, I mean, it, it really kind of breaks my heart. You know, these people have been, you know, working through some of the worst conditions imaginable, and they see this this new plant that, that's being built as just on the horizon. And then right before uh, they get an opportunity to jump in there and show us what they're going to do, we throw this, this privatization right on the table. And we, and we lock them out of the process, too. It's, it's, uh, it's just, it's bizarre to me. Um, you know, I'm really, you know, looking forward to having more conversations about this moving forward. Um, but I really would just urge my colleagues to, to think about what the, what's the best way to get construction back on track? What's the best way to, you know, to calibrate our, our systems? Because in the beginning, you know, that's, that's when we're going you know, to put all that money into it. That's when we're going to see, you know, the best return on our, our investment. Everything is new. It's going to take a while for, you know, for all the years to start breaking it down. And, you know, people have to jump down into the pits to, to you know, jury rig solutions. You know, in the beginning, uh, that's going to be kind of the best time for our staff. And we owe it to them. And to the rate payers of the city and Johnson City.